Hey, good morning and welcome to episode 58 of Talking to Artists. So today I'm going to be talking to watercolor artist uh, Hilary Slater. Uh, but before then, a few little pieces of news. So I'm happy to report I'm back at the cottage, which is fabulous. The caterpillars mostly seem to be gone or probably in their hibernation stage, but the almost all the oaks are completely denuded. So we're hoping that, um, you know, given the wet weather, that hopefully we can kind of start to see the forest kind of rejuvenate would be really great. Um, also have the, this is the last week of the Riverdale Art Walk online show. I want to thank so many people for came out to see us in the North Toronto show last weekend in Riverdale the weekend before. It was so great and I really loved it. And um, if you did see something there that you liked and didn't quite buy, it's on my store. And the Toronto Outdoor Store Virtual Store is happening, is starting on July 2nd. So take a look for that. So I'm now going to see, I think it looks like Hillary is here. And I am going to invite you to join me. I'm looking forward to chatting with her. So, uh, and her work is just very interesting. It's uh, watercolors, but she covers the surface with cold wax, which is really kind of another, uh, an interesting substrate. I think that creates kind of a, a real dreaminess. Oh, she's, uh, okay, so here she's saying, hi. Hey, Hillary, I can see you and I see I've invited you, but I don't see you joining me. Let me, again, challenges. Um, I don't know, Hillary, I can see that you're here. Just wanna make sure that you've got your updated um, uh, Instagram on. I can see you're invited and I can't seem to uninvite you and I can't seem to invite you again. So um, not sure what to say. I can see you've joined. I can see you said hi. I can see you say hi again. <laughs> I can see you here. Um, maybe I'll try and just do this. All right. Hey, Hillary. Oh, there you go. <laughs> it was uh, double dipping with my laptop and my phone trying to um, trying to be on both. And it's because I'm blind, you know, like this little screen. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. Yep, that's good. <laughs> I know. And, you know, sometimes you just don't know because, you know, people like it's like my Instagram is updated. I've done everything I'm supposed to do, but somehow it just doesn't work. So I'm so glad that we were finally able to connect. Good. All right. Good it. to see you. Good to meet you in, in person. <laughs> Ish. Instead of staring at my laptop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So are you settled? Um, yeah, got my tea. I'm good. <laughs> Excellent. Oh, that's always important. Yeah. Oh, shoot. Yeah, my tea is actually still brewing, so it'll be like a super strong cup by the time I actually get to it. Get it. So yeah. I had I had like a thousand different questions I wanted to start off with, but I actually I find I'm totally compelled to say that um, I was reading your blog about your experience uh, plein air painting. <laughs> and first of all, I want to say what an incredibly compelling writer you are. If you oh. won't be an artist, I think that's your second <laughs> career because I was just like totally sucked in. I'm like, what's going to happen next? <laughs> so uh, maybe you can obviously I know you do a lot of plain air you talk about that a lot in your um, on your website and stuff but maybe you can talk a little bit about that experience and okay how it must have been terrifying <laughs> cry when I tell that story so. oh well we don't have to if you don't want to I just it was amazing I actually mentioned it last night and I didn't cry so I might, I might be okay now. it's been three years <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I was plein airing on uh, in Barron Canyon and um, for years, I was trying to find um, Petawawa Gorge, which Tom Thompson painted. And I, you know, I racked my brains. It wasn't on the map. And then we went up. Ray had to go to um, Petawawa. And I said, I'm going to come with you and find this gorge. And it wasn't there. It was all flat. So I got really angry. And then he goes, well, what are you trying to find? And I so I showed him. He goes, oh, I've been there. It's in Algonquin Park. So, which happened to <laughs> that end of Algonquin Park near Petawawa. Right. We found it and we found the, the Barren Canyon. We went in for a hike. Um, there's like a one hour drive in to do a top trail at the top of the cliff. And so I went there three times and then I really wanted to get into the canyon. So Thanksgiving, we went canoeing and actually portaged in and, and I got one glorious day of actually being where Tom Thompson was and painting. Wow that energy of the rocks it was spectacular and, and I've painted about 500 paintings from that one day <laughs> so, wow that's incredible <laughs> but then the next spring in April I thought well 
haven't done a winter series and I'd really like to do all four seasons of the location and Ray had to go up again. So I went and I went in by myself. Don't do that. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah, as you start, it's kind of, like, doesn't that kind of against every single <laughs> survival thing they say? <laughs> Things I've learned in my wisdom. <laughs> yeah. I, I be in and that was, you know, it was slushy, but it was okay. And then um, the snow was starting to melt and I, I, um, walked up the cliff. I did actually five small watercolors in the morning and then the, the trail's a loop and I looped back down and missed the trail. And um, yeah, six and a half hours later, Ray's colleague was a fireman um, volunteer and he knew how to find me in the deep snow up to my hips and I was stuck in a swamp and I was not thinking I was ever going to get out. <laughs> Uh, what was what I found was fascinating is not only just the way you wrote, so it really kept you like obviously I knew you survived because I've talked to you, but you kind of <laughs> as, you, as you're going through this, you're like, oh my goodness, how is she going to get out of this? And that, uh, but I thought it was yeah, fascinating. Oh, I'm not going to get out of this. <laughs> and I just want to put a plug in for my friend Jackie in Oregon. Um, her son um, didn't make it out when he was a child, and so she started the Hug a Tree program. Yeah, yeah, I've heard of it for kids that teaches them to stay put and hug a tree because when you wander, you wander to the direction of your dominant arm. And I happen to be left-handed. So they had a harder time finding me. <laughs> so That's get, fascinating. Uh, but <laughs> not to stop, but stay put. <laughs> yeah, no, but I thought it was also really, uh, I thought it was amazing too, because I guess your background is in uh, landscape design and how you were kind of looking at the trees around you and you saw they were cedars and you knew they grew in swampy land. So therefore you were able to extrapolate from that, that you were basically walking in a swamp, which would be of course really dangerous at uh, in thaw time. That oh, the ice was going to crack and yeah, there were a lot of times where I didn't, <laughs> you know, my voice is joking now. <laughs> okay, change the topic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I'm, I'm just curious. So the paintings, you obviously did five paintings as you were kind of uh, doing this. Um, and I'm sure that it was very inspirational at the beginning of the day and not so much at the end of the day. Did you end up doing anything with those paintings or were they just kind of too fraught I'm, with anxiety? They're emotionally, one's hanging in our bedroom, actually. Um, so it's just a little one, like a little three inch. Um, but yeah, I, one, most of my plein airs, traditionally, I keep them for my own, um, kind of my own library of of the experience of being there, especially if it's something like that. Uh, and then I paint from those. When I come back to the studio, I either do large watercolors mounted on panel with cold wax, as you mentioned, or mm. recently I've been doing um, them on mylar because the watercolor has a, the paper has a tendency to buckle when it's being mounted overnight, like it dries. And if it buckles, it's ruined the painting. So I've had a lot right. of challenges with that. So I've kind of switched to, um, well, I haven't switched, but I'm I'm now doing mylar as well. So, but have some, you ever worked on uh, Upo? Yeah, it, um, mylar is not quite as expensive, but right. uh, <laughs> I used to do mylar oil on mylar twenty years ago when I was doing this massive naked pregnant women series, which was oh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> it's on Instagram. If you look back, <laughs> <laughs> I guess I didn't go back far enough. <laughs> like you'll see, you'll just see the icons on them. But the, yeah, they're life sized um women in all kinds of excruciating pregnancy stages <laughs> <laughs> not sure i want to relive that part <laughs> <laughs> exactly. yeah. reliving it like um it was three years my son was born and i just painted out all the trauma of some things that happened so <laughs> <laughs> oh that's wild it's worth it but <laughs> but i love your um and i do love the fact that you you know your watercolors are Obviously, they're watercolors because you can kind of tell with the kind of the way that the water and the colors move and I mean go between each other. But they're so vibrant, they're so unusual. Like in terms of, uh, you just don't get that sense of that. I won't say they're not tranquil, but they're just a much more bold than usual watercolors. Pastel, definitely. I work with liquid watercolor rather than block, solid blocks. Um, mm -hmm. So generally, yeah, it dissolves the paint to a thicker consistency, so you can get more color and still have the glazing effect. Uh, and that's really been my objective. So I'm, I'm a color person, you know? <laughs> yeah, I know me too. As I was reading your thing, I'm like, yep, group of seven, totally there. Lots of color, totally there. <laughs> Inspired by nature, totally oh. there. <laughs> you know Brian Rutenberg's stuff? Yes, yeah. yeah. Like somebody said, oh, your stuff looks like his. And I said, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> his live videos that he does. Your, your um, live video idea kind of reminded me of his 
monthly or seasonal um, um, videos that he does of his visits to the studio. And I thought, what a great idea. You can have somebody visit without having them infiltrate your, sp your space. I was saying yeah. a little live class last night and I was saying to them, you know, having humans in my studio, their energy stays after they've gone. And if it's a negative energy, it makes dark paintings. <laughs> <laughs> really a thing to have people come into your studio because whatever happens there will stay and, and will affect the next paintings that come out so sure. it's having a studio tour last weekend we had you know around 100 people through and yeah i have to do some smudging this week <laughs> and so they actually came into your into your space indoors yeah, yeah. it's a big studio here it's um beautiful it's massive it's ridiculous oh so jealous up there <laughs> I've got a bed up that way there. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, sorry to get you dizzy there. Um, <laughs> it, it is ridiculous, but I, um, I made the decision when I moved up here that um, I was going to take myself seriously. And uh, it's amazing what a difference it makes to you, but also to the public when they come in and say, well, this is all studio. <laughs> yeah. But I needed, I, I didn't think I needed it this big but I guess I do because I've filled it. Well, <laughs> one of the things I've learned, because I have three studios now, is yeah. there's never, never enough studios and there's never enough space. <laughs> <laughs> I keep trying to downsize. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but I think it also affects the size of pieces you do, because I was actually kind of in the role when I had Art Alchemy to start to do larger paintings because I kind of like the idea of working large. Mm -hmm. But now in the studio here, it's just it's too cumbersome. I don't have the space to move stuff. So I find I'm tending to go smaller or triptychs, actually, I'm kind of into right now. Since COVID, I've been working, you know, kind of that size over there because I, I don't know how long it's going to be before we have a show again. And, and if I have to stack them up on that, like that rack back there, it's got 300 paintings on it. Well, I sold quite a few last weekend, but, you know, I know what my space uh, maximum is. And even though it looks like yeah. a big, if the art starts taking over my painting zone, then I'm looking at old art, it, it stops me from painting new or it tends to yeah. direction. So I, I want to make sure I don't have to look at my, my art. Like it's kind of, some of it's like, okay, it's gone, go. It's time to go, you know, teenager out to the world. <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel like that too. I think that's normal. Yeah. I feel I always have this yin yang between, oh my gosh, I don't have enough work. I'm always scrambling. I always feel like I'm scrambling to get ready for the next show. And yet when I have a lot of work in my studio, that kind of stresses me out. Cause I feel like, oh my gosh, I'm never going to sell anything again in my entire life. <laughs> so I need to, it was just, of course, it, both are completely irrational, but I don't know. Yeah. I know what you mean. It's kind of, sometimes it's nice to just kind of go, okay, it's gone. Now I've got an empty studio again. Yeah. I, I would really love to be at that stage. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, well, I had three studios. You could put a bunch of shit in your other studio. That's what I did. <laughs> that, was a, that would have been an option in the past, but now I'm down to just one big studio. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> and so how was it How was it having people in your space again? I was just listening to a psychologist, and they were saying, like, our brains have even changed where, you know, there's such an, a deeply ingrained anxiety in almost everything we do because for the last, you know, year and a half or whatever, seeing people has been anxious. It's actually been – I was just um, thinking and talking about that after the show, because uh, we're uh, we we formed a new collective just during COVID, and so we've never actually met each other face to face either. Some of us. Oh, so, cool. Um, and then I started the Plan Air for Water. Uh, I don't know if you saw that. That um, tiny water has water that's cleaner than Arctic ice water, and hmm. it's being turned into gravel pits. So I saw this, got you know upset, and I decided as an artist maybe I can do something with doing Plan Air. So that was mm -hmm. my project. I started just a month ago and then we had this show and I, I kind of said well let's let's do a little fundraiser and help the water project and make our art make sense um like like there's some power that we can actually give ourselves as artists and so we did that and we had um the tiny FOTSA it's called the tiny shoreline association so tiny township is where I live and it's not small it's just called tiny because of a dog that it was named after so it's, it's a really large <laughs> Tiny marsh, large marsh. <laughs> um, that word is misnomer. Anyway, um, so we had the public in and they came through and, and a lot of the people who care about the water came to the show and, and bought art to support the water, to support the artists who are supporting the water. So it became this unintentional, phenomenal marketing thing that really, like the, the, um, the water issue is, Effective, you know, it's, it's for everybody in our whole township. So it really, mm -hmm. 
the ultimate way to get the word out that we were having this show. And, and I think we were just swarmed with wonderful people who cared about art, but cared about water and it, you know, a marketing marvel. <laughs> um, and so, and so were there, was there a portion of the sales that went back to the conservation? I gather? Um, each of us did something at our own booths, but also yeah. a postcard that we shared that was, uh, we each did a, kind of a postcard sized art print and, and the pack of those was $20. And um, <clears throat> so people bought those as well. And, and so all the artists paid for their printing of that and that was their contribution. So and I didn't charge anybody to have their location at the show. Like usually you'd pay to be at a show and that was all waived in order to pay for the water issue. So it, it all worked out on so many levels and we had such a wonderful weekend. Like it was, you know, the, the weather was supposed to be Absolutely. Like, I mean, there was a tornado on, on Saturday. We didn't get it, but it was just like, oh my God. And Friday, there were a couple of, I don't want to do the show. It's going to be a disaster. And it was a miracle. We had light yeah. all day. The rain held off till five o'clock. And then the next day, the thunderstorms held off till five o'clock. So uh, I'm still on the kind of a high from that. I'm exhausted. <laughs> That's amazing. That's like, well, it's, if, if I've learned nothing else about doing lots of outdoor shows, it's that don't listen to the weather because if you start to make your plans, I mean, It'll you know, plan, plan for the worst, prepare for the worst or whatever, plan for the best or whatever. But uh, yeah, I kind of think it happens so often where the weather forecast is supposed to be horrible. Our weekend as well. And, yeah. you know, we had wind, which was a bit of a bit stressful because yeah. we were intense, but yeah, yeah it was lovely. And so great to see people, but I have to say it was kind of exhausting. Like you realize that, and you have these weird lulls in conversation, which I normally never have, right? But it's just kind of like, I think we're kind of out of practice. And, and yeah, exactly. That's what I was going to say that when everybody, you know, came in and then between, like it was pretty much a general gradual flow of people, but in those few minutes between, I was like, no, I don't want to talk to you. <laughs> like the <Yeah>. other, <laughs> I, I, have to, I have to down, you know. I'm I'm what I call an extroverted introvert that I, I talk a lot as you can see, <laughs> and I can. Yeah, that's great. I like that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> an um, I can talk for an hour, but then I need ten hours to recuperate after of being alone. Yeah. And and I raised uh, my partner, and he's in the house. We have a hundred and fifty year old log house that was on the site, and then we put the studio on three years ago. So we kind of each have our own home, <laughs> our own space. I sometimes sleep over here. If I want to focus on my art, the best way to do that is to be in the studio, go to sleep and wake up with creative, you know, hopefully. Yeah, like you're totally immersed. That's right. Um, but if I've slept in the house, then I'm, I'm in home mode. I'm in wifey mode. And, you know, it's, oh, let's have breakfast and go in the hot tub. And then, you know, I don't get to work. Yeah. Who knows when? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, having the two spaces, I would recommend that to every artist to not just have your own room, but an absolute step away from the family life in order to be the artist self. So, Yeah. Well, I, that's one of the reasons I moved actually because I had a studio in my home and uh, I find the problem is, is that I also tend to be a bit of a night owl. So I was kind of yeah. puttering and wasting time in the morning and I'd start to get going around one o'clock or two and then I'd be working until like eight or nine or 10. Right. And it, How'd you make this it, into at 11? That's too early. I'm going to get up at my breakfast. <laughs> Pretend I'm working by doing Instagram, you know, all those classic procrastination tips. I'm flying better. <laughs> Pretend I'm not. Yeah. But even when I'm in my studio, it takes me a long time to kind of get into the the right mindset or whatever. I don't know. Oh, absolutely. It's Sometimes not till four o'clock in the afternoon that I start to paint. But yeah. I chastise myself and I probably still do sometimes. But now I've known, I've realized that cleaning is part of the art process or organizing or, you know, the OCD. Uh, and, you mm -hmm. know, get things organized and then suddenly maybe an old painting will kick in or, or a thought or a, something you see on your, your feed comes up, whatever. And, and then you just get that blitz and then, oh, I have to paint. And those are the yeah. best. Those are the absolute best things. Yeah, I, I agree. And sometimes it is stuff like, you know, you know, doing edges and sanding panels and all those kind of things that do have to be done. So you're right. And I do feel sometimes that I'm procrastinating, but really it's, it is part of the process of getting you into that right headspace. And yeah. uh, when you've got a lot going on, I find it's something that's hard to get into that headspace and clear the clutter out. Yeah. And, and a lot of artists suffer from depression. I know I've seen like oodles of information or oodles of people's comments. And I struggle um, more so in the winter. And I've been taking vitamin D because of COVID and I didn't get depressed this winter. But I do. Yeah. But it's like I've over 
35 years of painting, I've learned that that's part of the process and I have to accept the torture of depression while it's happening because generally that bundle of depression is what feeds into, it's like a tidal wave, you know, the water level drops before the mm -hmm. tidal wave happens, the depression drops to gather energy for the next um, massive wave of art coming out of you. That's the way I like to think of it. So it, it helps me when I get depressed to know that it's feeding into something great that's coming soon. And sometimes that's a great way. That's a great way to look at it. I'm sure. Um, like I don't suffer from depression, but I know a lot of my friends and a lot of people I know do. Um, and I'm sure that that must help you to bear through the low periods when you know it's a little bit of a, you know, this is part of the natural process, and I need to just kind of honor it and and stuff. And and my obviously I need there's something in it that I need that then is going to kind of release this great wave of creativity. I think that's a really yeah wonderful I, way to think about it. Also, sometimes I mean Ray's still in training because we've been together like seven years, but um, he's still kind of learning to trust. Like I'll have a big meltdown, you know, it's kind of a hormonal tears or a fight or a usually not too aggressive, but sometimes yeah maybe. <laughs> <laughs> um, like an emotional you know melody yeah. and i'm admitting this on public tv oh dear <laughs> <laughs> just makes you human hillary <laughs> then, then like or later i'll go i have to go to the studio and then the, sometimes like suddenly like a huge painting will come out because it was, <laughs> it was needed out and i wasn't at the studio and my my hormones my emotions are going like get out of here you need to yeah. go and, and it it's happened. like you were at a it was like a cork that needed to be released yeah good 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 analogy definitely and and i think yeah. that's something that as artists we have to warn people when they date us or live with us or marry us <laughs> that, <laughs> yeah. and i can be this person and it's not personal and there's nothing i can do about it because i need to be an artist and that's my yeah. role that's why i'm on the planet right so well, and I would argue that's probably a good message for all of, uh, you know, people who suffer from mental health issues, right? And I mean, I think everybody during COVID at some point has had their mental health compromised yeah. because you just have to, right? Mm -hmm. It's it's such a strange situation. Mm -hmm. Definitely. It's definitely. And, <laughs> well, and for me too, I'm, a, I'm a, a high pure extrovert. So I for sure get my energy from people. And so the isolation was really a challenge for me, which is why I started talking to artists. Lisa, I could go talk to a bunch of people, you know. Uh, but, but, it, <laughs> but also, you know, I really try not to paint unless I'm feeling joyful. Like for me, I want to kind of um, in your share that joy. Yeah. And, but, you know, I say at the beginning, it was hard to kind of get myself into that zone without it being forced, you know. And you had to sort of consciously sort of think about, you know, Mm -hmm. what you have right now that you're joyful about which isn't the traditional easy I have a good life got lots of friends having fun going to an opening <laughs> drinking wine <laughs> you know <laughs> for COVID if I didn't have art like I don't know yeah. where you put yourself in those long hours of you know being at home and <laughs> no socializing if I didn't have paint to to slash it out with and you know pour yeah. the paper or whatever I, I tried to I can't even fathom what it would feel like to not have that. And we're really lucky to be put in the, um, in the world as artists, I think. And I think yeah. art really come into its own during COVID. A lot of people who recognize Absolutely. paintings, they'd have no holidays. Like having a new painting on the wall is a window into a different place. And people say, well, I have all this art on the walls. I say, well, change the art and you'll have a holiday. <laughs> you know, yeah. like, it, rotate your art put some behind the couch and put a new one up and oh hunky dory free re, you know i agree i think i i, I sorry i was gonna say i agree i think that people have had more see more value in art because they can kind of really see what it, it feeds them and gives back to them um but i think the other thing especially at the beginning you saw a lot of people trying tapping into their own creativity as well which i think is also so valuable because so often it's something you do as kids and you never really pick it up again and then if you can't yeah. paint perfectly then you just figure you can't try right yeah yeah, I started teaching like the week after COVID hit. My real estate agent asked me to help her mother who was at home and uh, alone. And I said, I can, if I get a few people together, I could teach a Zoom watercolor class. Well, it, it grew and similar to your, your video talks. And I, I now have, I don't know, I had like 30 people on my list. And, but, you know, some of them show up sporadically and some more regularly. And we've done watercolors every week on Zoom since COVID started, except this week, which is I had to cancel because oh. today and everything like this week was. <laughs> so, um, yeah, well, it, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> nice change, <laughs> but yeah, 
absolutely special. And last last summer when we kind of had a bit of a um, release, we, we got out. I set up a plein air weekend and they brought their trailers and camped on our two acres. And we had a wonderful art weekend with COVID distancing and we'll try to do it again this summer. Uh, but I think that's that's really helped me to have something regular that scheduled my week. Because when there's yes. nothing... When the week's completely open, I, the, ahead of time, I think, oh, I have a whole week of painting. And then the open week happens, and it's like, oh, I can't get out of bed. <laughs> well, there doesn't seem to be the same urgency. I totally agree with you. Like, there's not the same urgency of, like, well, I have an outdoor show, and so and so, you know, like, so I have to have stuff for my tent, or I have to, I'm paying money to fly to San Diego and do this show. I can't show up with no art. Whereas with everything being digital, you know, it's just, it's a very different thing. You don't have to have as much work. Right. And the other, the other funny thing, too, is, you know, we sorry we had these outdoor shows like in the tents and all of a sudden i realized that none of my paintings and none of the sides have been finished because i didn't need to because i was just taking pictures of them right. <laughs> yeah suddenly going live again uh, i mean having human contact last weekend uh, um <laughs> it was it was really interesting um to recognize that i'm out of practice i think we all are and it's exhausting being around people and a different exhaustion from from zoom being around people like the energy of people they, they bring their energy to the table physically rather than just yeah. a pile, right and um it, it was really an interesting assessment of how different it was this time having a show from two years ago yeah yeah i, I, I mean i i think it's great like i feel like i'm certainly very happy to do that so your your watercolor um sessions are they classes like do you teach or is it just yeah, kind of i do a demo i have my um I can show you here. I have my my cell phone in this hook that oh, yeah. floats over my table. And um, so then while I'm painting, it's actually a better way to teach than live because I can demonstrate and they're looking at the camera that's face down on. And then my laptop is me face to face. So I have two connections to Zoom. And I can paint and they can copy along or they can just watch and then follow later. Um, hmm. uh, but they're not trying to paint. And and that's one of my stipulations. I don't want anybody to ever paint a copy of what I've done. I want them to feel their own creativity and just learn some some skills, some techniques, but then figure their own composition or their own colors. Uh, it should never be robotic. Art should never be yeah. trying to look like the teacher. And and a lot of schools, I mean, I was a high school art teacher for a long time, so I would <laughs> kill somebody if they copied me. <laughs> <laughs> but I think the the joy of creativity is finding finding your own personality in the painting. So I teach. Yeah. Um, and well, and, it's and I, to have to, like at the end of the class, they all put their work up and I, oh, they're all different. That's great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, and I think there's some value, like especially if you're first learning out. I think sometimes copying does help you to kind of oh, yes, learn to see things, right? Like learn to see the technique and how people put yeah. things together. And I'm sure probably every single artist at some point has copied a group of seven painting because it's valuable lessons, right? But you're right. I think that as long as people realize that's a teaching tool, that you yeah. then have to then use that to jump off and find your own. Like, we generally do two paintings. I'll do the first one that's kind of meticulous, more like drawing with a brush and, you know, kind of teaching the technical details and then I say okay let's have fun get out the spray bottle and uh, play with it and splash the paint around and you know don't be too cautious and and wet on wet is really my passion so uh, I get I get my student like this year we've kind of we've been together for a year and I was okay it's time to have a little bit more fun stop the control yeah make a mess <laughs> yeah I love I love the idea of your wet on wet and I really loved reading that you know sometimes you add like little snowballs and stuff like that to your pieces that's so cool <laughs> I was, I, it happened I was out plein air painting in the winter because uh, I like to do it all year round um and my brush froze and it was a solid lump of <laughs> paint right <laughs> tiny marsh and, and I'm dabbing and I thought, oh, well, you know, I just I, I dabbed chunks of ice and paint onto the places where I wanted the colors and the paint tray froze as well. So I put the thing in the car and I, OK, that was a waste of time. <laughs> I tried to do another and same thing. So, I, I, you know, I did my I try to always do three paintings. I don't know why, but I just I think three is a magic number. But I, uh, the first one's kind of warming up. The second one usually goes really well. The third one, I'm pushing it and just draining the rest of the creative energy out of me. But the exercise is a good one to to keep me working at, at new and sometimes just pushing it too. I'll find a new technique 
like the snowballs. So I got in the car and went home and I looked at the, the paintings and they dried and the snow had melted. And it was so amazing. Like it, it was <laughs> wet on wet. I was trying to look, do like, um, you know, like um, wetlands and, and water. Yeah. Melt. And there was the water melting. It, you know, it was like such a spectacular combination. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> so then I took it to the the Zoom class and I said, "Okay, we're going to do snow today. Go get a bucket of snow." <laughs> and, <laughs> did. Um, and they all, some of them loved it, some of them hated it. That's fine. Does, doesn't matter. Well, but, but I think it's about. But isn't it about embracing the serendipity? Like you can't control yeah. it. You yeah. can't. You don't know exactly what's going to happen. You have to kind of trust the process to a certain degree. But also, you have to be open to what the final result is. And some yeah. people, I think, are naturally. That's easier than other for other people. Yeah, like like I'm, you know, Ray says I'm a control freak, but I'm not with my art. I have this balance of like I'm an OCD. I was saying to my students last night, I do pottery, right? And I absolutely love the precision of the wheel turning, and and the mud just comes up, and you know it's pottery porn. You can see the videos on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> and I make this pot and then and, and like in the, I'm in this meditative state of oh yeah serenity and then the pot stops and I go oh god there's mud all over me I have to wash my hands and, I, <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I've got this neat freak in my head you know the the maternal neat freak thing <laughs> and it's such a conflict uh, and it's the same with art but with wet on wet I can let go of all the the control of realism and structure and I, do, I know how to do those things but my play is letting go of that and being yeah free. like the child in me has to come out in order for me to really love what I've painted well and I think that yeah it's funny because I'm actually not a neat freak anybody who knows me knows for sure that's the case like this, these are my this is my shirt here has got paint all over it um but uh and I actually feel much more creative when I'm messy. Like when my hands are messy, I have a full outfit I have to wear because I know I'm going to get messy. But when we do um, our creative adventures, one of them we did, um, we asked people to wear clothes that could get get dirty, right? Because people are so concerned about not getting messy. So the first thing I did was like, put your hands in the paint and just yes. put your hands all down. You're like, oh. now you're messy. Oh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> I was nasty with oil paint, but yeah, acrylic. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I work in acrylic, so that's easier. Yeah. <laughs> no, oils. no, no, I know because my sister was like that too. And then you see the little bits of oil everywhere, right? So yeah, okay, no, because I'll yeah. give you that one. <laughs> I, I would always have like my handbag on, and it would swing, and then I go, "Where's this paint coming from?" It was all over my handbag. When I was an oil painter, um, yeah. and I did oil paints for I don't know twenty years, maybe, but I started having really serious vertigo. And there's a, a forum about oil paint and, and vertigo. Nobody's going to say it. I, but I just thought if there's any chance that that's the cause, I never want to have vertigo again in my life. It's so. horrible, isn't it? I know. I've only had it once. It was just like so, so strange. And it, yeah. yeah, paint fumes, you can't smell them. You know, the odorless, the odorless fumes, the odorless spirits or whatever, they're not your yeah. friend. Because you don't know how strong the fumes are. And uh that's that's the hum, you know the huge danger and like, I mean there's a reason why Van Gogh went mad right because he was like, yeah oh I totally agree it's one of my it's one of my ra rants as well is that just because it's low VOC and you can't smell it doesn't mean it's not deadly like I work with resin and so right. a lot of people say oh, oh no there's no if there's no smell it's fine I'm like yeah, no it's no. not it's not <laughs> fine number one second of all as soon as you apply heat to plastic there's gases that are dangerous like you have to wear a mask yeah. you have to ventilate yeah yeah and my, my studio, I had an HRV unit installed when we built it um, because it's, and any studio should have open ventilation year round. <coughs> but um, the HRV sucks the air out and kind of filters it and whatever, um, brings in fresh air. But it's, mm -hmm. um, it's a noisy little, you know, whatever it has to be there. And um, so opening the windows is much nicer in summer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's what we do. Like, well, uh, of course, my yeah, uh, my cabin studio has lots of windows and the screen door, so that's uh, yeah, that's wonderful. You're right. at Six Mile Lake, right? Sorry, you're at Six Mile Lake. Your cabin? No, actually, though, some friends of mine just moved from Six Mile Lake. I'm actually um, just south of Charbot Lake, so north of Kingston. Oh, okay. Oh, out, out towards that direction. All right. Yeah. yeah. And whereabouts are you then? Because I, I guess I assumed you're around Petawawa, Algonquin. Um, Georgian Bay, so South Georgian Bay, it's called. So uh, Penetang is 15 minutes. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's think, a lovely but... area. I just, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Sorry. I said Collingwood's an hour that direction, <laughs> the other direction. Uh, <laughs> I, I have shows in, like, uh, you know, I'm involved in the arts community around the whole 
gamut of circles. So like the mm-hmm. tiny art collective members, we're, we're located in tiny, but we have Collingwood artists, we have Wasega artists, we have Midland artists. So it's not like it's people who paint Georgian Bay basically, but we're just located in tiny. So we're right. all, we're all trying to kind of connect together because we're all painting Georgian Bay. The, the spot, the span of it is like an hour you know, to drive from here to Collingwood hour and a half to Meaford. Um, and everybody's painting the same genre of paintings. Like we're all kind of group of seven groupies and yeah. there are a group of seven locations in our area. So it's, it's more like, yeah, we want to just be artists in this region, but Tiny's the location where we hold our shows mostly. Right? That oh, was- that's amazing. Did you happen to catch, it was only a few years ago, actually, that McMichael, they had this uh, photographer, a couple, couple uh, husband and wife team, they were photographers, and they went back and they photographed all the actual locations of where the group of seven sat, did, where they took their paintings. I, but I saw it online, and that because that was yeah. some of my research to find Barron Canyon. Was oh, okay. Yeah. Think, their photographs and, and they found the Natch as well, which is not far from Barron Canyon. It's another um, similar to Barron Canyon kind of area. So yeah, I was looking at their work because it's like, oh, I really, I'm, I, you know, we, we live at a wen- near Awenda Provincial Park and that mm-hmm. I was there once in November um, just walking the shore and I went, oh my God, I'm in a Tom Thompson painting. <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> cool. Period, you know? And you suddenly you look up and you go, I've been here before, but on canvas. And right. yeah, to actually be where the gods of art, of our Ontario artists, you know, to actually be in their footsteps. Thank you, Van Halem, Murray. <laughs> that one, he's a friend of mine, Murray Van Halem. Hi, oh, Murray. nice. <laughs> so I never get to see him anymore. <laughs> but yeah, um, th- th- that's really a, one of the reasons why I love living where we live is because you know this, the clouds will kind of billow up, and I go, "Oh yeah, this is the painting." <laughs> yeah, and, yeah, yeah. But, I think there's something about I don't know if it's just being raised on uh, Tom Thompson or like we've had this cottage for like you know over forty years, and so it's that uh, that granite um, bedrock, in, and it's and an aqua kind of region, right, with all the those rocks and stuff. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, uh, yeah. As well, yeah. I'm gonna come. Yeah. Back. I'm coming to your cottage. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, let's do that. And I'll come to your cottage. You can teach me watercolor. Totally. You can share my big- <laughs> yeah, there's plenty. <laughs> That's going to be my New Year's resolution. You know, like my, my whole thing a couple of years ago was travel for art. It's like, where can I travel and where can I do my art there? And this year I just feel like, yeah, I think I'm just going to, you know, invite myself to a bunch of my friend artists' <laughs> spaces and paint. <laughs> That's what I was saying to Ray, like, you know, let's put a trailer on the back of the truck and just let me take off because you can stay with the dogs and the chickens, you know, you like, yeah. I'll just take off and go do my art and just camp out. And he says, where are you going to go? And I said, I don't know, wherever the picture looks good. <laughs> and I just <laughs> camp by the side of the road and the, you know, whatever, the yeah. paint through the windows. I mean, I do that already. When we go, we went to, we drove from here to Labrador and I'll tell oh, you. lovely. Every artist needs to do this trip, but don't 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 spoil my my dream place. <laughs> we took we took from Ontario. The roads are now open all the way to Happy Valley Goose Bay, so you mm-hmm. can drive up through the middle of Quebec. And there's a place called the Eye of Quebec, <laughs> a spectacular painting spot in itself. Um, there's a circle of a lake. It's like a donut shaped lake that was created by an asteroid that landed on the Earth. 10,000 years ago or something. Um, oh, cool. And, and it looks like these amazing hills off in the distance, you know, those kind of lovely blue fading back hills. And they're all actually hills on the other side of the donut. <laughs> like you're at the side of the huh. donut. So you're looking back. That's great. And that's the only place to stop between Quebec and Labrador. But you stop there for the night at Uapishka, amazing little um, research station, all uh, off the grid and sp- just really cool place. And then you go on to, you drive through Labrador and you get to Happy Valley and you dump your car, you park it, and you get on the ferry and you take the ferry all the way up the coast of Labrador, almost to the Torn Gats, which is where I'd really like to go. Um, but it's $9,000 to go there. The ferry is 500 to go up. <laughs> and and you, look, you stop in at all the little native villages and you see, you know, here, here's a view of, up there. I don't know if you can see that. So all these lovely mountains. Yeah. All right. Um, I kind of exaggerated the color a bit, but you get the idea. <laughs> yeah, it looks amazing. 
such a spectacular trip and it's so relaxing to just sit on the ferry and your paintings just slide by and you paint them and it's at a speed that you can actually capture everything so our, on our trip i was painting in the passenger seat while ray drove the whole three weeks oh wow and and, and it was enough space to just set up a little canvas a little um board you know and i was doing watercolors of course so it's not mm -hmm. so acrylics and oils but um traveling and painting yeah that's me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a, I'm a really terrible watercolor painter. I, I'll have to admit that, but uh, it is definitely convenient. Uh, sorry. Crack the whip on you. <laughs> you should. Yeah. I know. I was just like, I think I need to take your class. I love it. I love the, I love the fluidity of it. I just, uh, I think that's the problem I have. I don't know enough about the technique, but anyway, but when I go traveling, I always bring watercolors with me, which is kind of a bit weird because I don't actually paint very yeah. well, but I do like the experience. And I remember doing a, uh, a cruise down the um, Yangtze River and we were in China. It was the same thing. Like we had the balcony and you kind of just sit there and watch it go by and just yeah. gorgeous like landscape. New, and, new yeah, land. Very fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Travel and art. I mean, it's, uh, I think it, it, they just go together and, in my world, but travel, travel. Yeah. I'm so yearning to travel <laughs> again. Oh, me too. I've just booked uh, to do Art San Diego and a show in Washington uh, in October. So, um, and you'll have you have you got your second shot yet? Everybody asks. Yep, that. yep, I have. Yep. So I'm actually you ready? Actually one one and a half weeks. So I still have another few days to get to my two week mark. But uh, yeah, feels better. Like it feels good. Hmm. I wish I'd had it before the show, but yeah, coming up soon. And then who knows the world's like, I'm sure travel is just going to be like blitz. Like everybody's going to be out booking things and the prices are going to go up. And you know, it's all Oh, gonna... I'm sure. Yeah. And I think book, things are already probably pretty booked, right? Like it's kind of, I know a lot of the cottages around here, they were booked over a year ago. Yeah. You know? Cottages are, but as far as travel, like, out, out, like yeah. travel, I don't know how that will be just yet, but yeah. My objective is to travel all winter. I'm not really actually. I love painting in winter, but I a month of it is enough, and then I'm ready for spring again. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> really heavy winter up here. Like it's six months a year of snow, um, in general, and it's it. Yeah, it gets a little much by about April. You know, you want to go drown yourself in Algonquin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we had uh, we stayed at the cottage all winter, so it's the first time I've been up here as well, where it's like you know we're very isolated and. It was fascinating to watch, like the watch the lake freeze and hmm. it was oh, yeah. freaky when it broke up. <laughs> yeah, when the ice, like when it's frozen overnight and then this, the morning kind of melts again and all the ice shards all pile up on the beach and it's all like crystal jewels. There's <laughs> amazing things that nature does that you don't know yeah. if, you get, if you don't live here because they're just, you know, one hour of it and then it's gone. And uh, th those things are spectacular. But, uh, yeah, I used to live on, uh, I used to live on right on Lake Huron. And so the same thing when it would break up and you'd get all this, yeah, this beautiful, yeah. I don't, it reminds like an ice princess castle or something. I know. That texture reminds me of some of your painting textures. And, yeah, um, maybe. Like if you did a, I'm not suggesting that you should do it, but if you did a winter scene, if, I don't think you do paint winter colors, right? Well, it's funny you say that because right now I'm doing a lot of very silvery blue backgrounds with a very cool, um, like silvers and pale grays and pale yeah. blues and lavenders and stuff. So I am actually kind of working on those. So winter theme um, textured uh, with a maybe a triangular palette knife, so you can get those little shards of glass. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'd be good. <laughs> yeah. So I. So I what's went... what's up? Sorry, what's next for you then? What are you kind of working on? Oh, God. Um, well, as I said, I've just started playing with mylar instead of paper. Um, and that's, I can do watercolor on mylar, but the color's not really electric the way I like my colors to be. So um, I, I've kind of been playing with acrylics this season. So I'm, I'm breaking out of the watercolor. I still do the watercolors on location and I still do small watercolors, but to get large, I'm finding that, the technicalities of mounting watercolor paper are just too risky, as I said earlier. And so yeah. on, on uh, acrylic on Mylar, uh, I did a huge one last week of all of my emotions about the, the water issue in Tiny, and it was 60 inches, and I finished, like, blasting out my frustrations at the government. <laughs> wow. At the government. So, um, yeah, so if, if I get upset, I paint big. And, and it seems like I'm getting upset about the water issue. <laughs> So it's good. It's a well. It's good reason. Yeah. 
Yeah. And, yeah, and I, is it, you know, why wouldn't I just express all of my frustration in color instead of words, right? So. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. No, it's interesting because I've had a couple of pieces recently that people have asked me to do canvas instead of uh, panel. Mm -hmm. So, of course, you know, because normally I stain the panel and the wood grain is a really important yeah. part of it. Yeah. Um, I, my, I've been tr trying to do almost like a watercolor technique in the background. So I still have that level of interest and it still reads mm -hmm. water and stuff. <laughs> But yeah. Uh, yeah, it'd be interesting to work on something like Mylar. Or... I haven't done that before. I played with Yupo, which I do quite enjoy. I think it's fun. Oh, it's a similar feeling. And like, it's really hard to get Mylar right now. I actually bought the role pre-COVID. So um, I, yeah. I, if anybody's got it, they can let us. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, like everything, I know everything's hard to get right now. My panels too, I've got it. I don't know, a commission that now has been pushed from, I don't know, February to June to August for the panel. Because of the availability of materials? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's one of the, that was, I, I bought a huge roll of watercolor paper before COVID, just before, and, and then COVID struck. I was like, thank God I got my big roll of paper because it comes from England, right? It's um, arches. Oh, I guess. yeah. France. But yeah, um, it's, it's a long distance <laughs> package to to be delivered and it's like 10 yards of watercolor paper i buy it wow, by the a lot and it's it's a couple hundred dollars but uh, i actually i think i got that one at wyndham art supplies in guelph they're a superb art store if you happen to be in that area um and yeah i, I just had it and, and i was like thank god i've got watercolor paper to survive covid well i just heard the same thing because i was kind of playing with different size panels and so i became i went on this like I don't know, obsessive rampage of collecting all these different size panels. And so at one point my studio was just feeling kind of claustrophobic because I had all these panels yeah. everywhere that were blank, but <laughs> I'm still going through them. So now it's like a client's looking for a commission. I'm like, hmm, how about a 42 by 42? Because that's what I have in my studio. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I, I was sending a piece to Blue Crow because I'm, they represent me. And, um, and I, it was a, a, the 12 inch show and I, I didn't have a yeah. 12 inch board. So I had to mount it on canvas and it, just didn't feel right to me. I mean, it, it, it was a 12 inch show, so I had no choice because of COVID. Right. <laughs> I think I'd really lowered my standards to not mount them the way I usually do. Hi, Deb. There's my friend Deb Horsbold from London. I don't get to see her often these days either. <laughs> oh, lovely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that square foot show looks like it's gonna be really good. Jody does a fabulous yeah. job curating it and putting it together. She's so cheerful and she's kept her energy up through all of the frustrations of lockdowns and galleries and i i take yeah her. i i could never do the work that she does i'm so glad she does it for me i really <laughs> appreciate having a gallery and uh especially in toronto because that's really the center of canada's art world john hartman it's the center of the world isn't it that's not what... world yes <laughs> <laughs> john hartman's my neighbor he lives two doors down and, and everybody goes, oh, my God, you live near John Hart. Yeah, well, we're neighbors. You know, he's, he's just a regular guy. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty cool, though. Full um, neighbor, yeah. Really got, yeah. He's, he's a, like an encyclopedia of information. You, know, you talk to him on any subject, any subject oh, at all. Maybe I should interview him. See if he wants to be on my show. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck. <Kenny. laughs> but also, like, one son's a photographer and one's a videographer. So they're pretty cool as well. Um, yeah. Yeah, so I didn't know that they were there when we moved in here. I, I didn't realize I was moving into Artist Alley. Um, yeah, that's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, very cool neighborhood, definitely. But George, I was, I was, but I always think it's cool too. Like I think that you know the Canadian art world is I think pretty small. Like I find you, know, you kind of run into the same people, and I just always think it would be really neat. You know, like twenty years from now, and you know some. I mean, presumably some of the people that we hang out with are going to be super famous, right? Oh. And it's just like, oh yeah, I knew that when they were just like this, we did these little stinky shows together. You know? <laughs> Maybe the group of seven of the future, right? The, That's right. You the, never know. The groups of now. <laughs> well, because I don't know. I don't always think you recognize if you're, especially if you're pushing boundaries. You don't always recognize you're doing something super innovative while you're doing it. You're just kind of trying to get through what you're doing, right? And yeah. It's only maybe in hindsight sometimes it's like, oh, that was a really cool thing. <laughs> yeah, just trying to communicate what's inside, right? That's what artists are doing. They're just talking in a different language. Yeah. Yeah. yeah for sure. Well, I think we're actually almost uh, kind of getting to the end of our interview, which is so fast. <laughs> but I always, like, I always like to end all my questions with, uh, you know what it is, time, money, everything is no issue. What's your big hairy ass goal? I'm living it already, I think. I, I don't want to be greedy. I think I'm really, 
um, I'm overjoyed to be where I am and what I'm doing. So that's amazing. Well, that's the best place to be, right? Yeah. I think Plus so. a little more travel. I'm thinking already in there. <laughs> <laughs> I request those. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> talking to you, Kate. Thank you so it much. It was great talking to you too. Thank you so much. And just let, why don't you just tell everybody your Instagram and website just so people can find you. At Hillary Slater Art is Instagram. My website is Hillary Slater Artist. And my location is Hillary Slater Studio in Tiny on the 17th concession. You can always drop by and uh, come for coffee now that I'm going to okay. get <laughs> and, and your Zoom uh, classes, are they on your website? Um, no, actually, they're not. They've just been kind of by word of mouth. Um, you can just email me, Hillary Slater at gmail.com, Hillary with one L. And um, just let me know you'd like to join in. It's 10 bucks a class. Drop in. And uh, if you need instruction, you'll get some every day, every time. <laughs> that sounds like fun. There's somebody here to buy eggs. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Okay, well, I'll let you go then. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> okay, bye. Thanks very much. <laughs> that's an unusual end to an interview, but that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> So that was, uh, that was great. I really enjoyed talking to Hillary. And um, so all of her information will also be on my, um, on my Instagram. This interview will also be saved to my Facebook page and YouTube channel. So please subscribe to YouTube would be great. If you feel like leaving a comment on things I can do better, people you want to talk to, that would be fabulous. And I am also in the process of putting into a podcast. I think I uploaded uh, Gordon, Her Gordon Leverton's last week and Lisa's is coming tomorrow. So um, that's on talking to artists on where you listen to your podcasts. Thank you so much for joining us and we will see you next week. Have a great Canada day. Bye-bye.